Hiya, we are live from COGX talking to some of the finest minds in artificial intelligence. And joining me now is Stefan Valhurst. Hiya. Hi there. So you're uh, the co-founder of GovLab. Tell us a little bit about how you help people with your work and what you actually do. Well, GovLab is a action research center. Uh, I co-founded about six years ago. And the uh, mission is to improve people's lives by changing how we govern, how we make decisions, how we design public services, or solve public problems uh, using new technologies and new methods. And specifically, we focus on uh, what we believe are two important assets that technology has enabled us to leverage more of. One is people. So we do a lot of work around collective intelligence. We do a lot of work around uh, leveraging people's expertise to address critical public needs. But the other one is data. And so here we do a lot of work around leveraging data, using AI, using blockchain, in order to really try to answer questions that matter. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk to you about data later because I saw your TED talk, it's very interesting and I'm really excited about celebrating the positives rather than the kind of narrative that we get in the press, which can be kind of a downer. But what do you mean by collective intelligence? Well, collective intelligence, that's what we mean that everyone has a insight, an idea, a skill set that can be leveraged if we find a way to tap into that supply side. For instance, one type of collective intelligence is quite often leveraged using citizen science, where you have a well-defined question and citizens can collect insights or data. How many birds uh, have you seen? How many trees have that kind of disease? How many uh, proteins can we see in that picture, for instance? Mm -hmm. And so leveraging that kind of expertise and contributions mm -hmm. uh, can uh, make a huge difference uh, because the volume of contributions uh, can be important, but also the type of expertise that you otherwise would not have. And so that's what we mean by collective intelligence. Okay, so kind of putting citizens, work, citizens to work to improve their communities. It could be citizens, it could be experts, um, but it could be, yeah, anyone that has uh, something to contribute. And our assumption is that everyone has something to contribute. Unfortunately, quite often we never provide the platform for them to contribute around the issues they care about, they are interested in, or have a, a certain expertise uh, about. And so the best example of collective intelligence is Wikipedia. Uh, that uh, provides a platform and everyone can contribute their insights with regard to a particular kind of topic or an individual. And so that's what we try to scale up um, and especially apply to solving public problems. So how can we tap into that expertise that uh, too often is not recognized and as a result wasted? What kind of public problems? Could be any problem. So it could be, for instance, problems with regard to how do we deal with garbage collection in a city uh, at that level? And mm -hmm. then you could actually tap into, uh, through some kind of open innovation platform, uh, tap into the expertise of people in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could also be, anyway, how do we deal with Zika, for instance? So we had a, uh, uh, several uh, projects. One was on, uh, which we call smarter crowdsourcing projects. And so one was on, for instance, Zika. And so here, one question that we had was, how do we deal with standing water? Uh, where, as you know, breeding of mosquitoes uh, tends to happen. And as a result, if you want to contain Zika, then you have to uh, contain the standing water. And so here, we basically thought about where does expertise reside with regarding, with regarding to standing water? And it turns out that pool builders are the ones that know best and so by just thinking about where does expertise intelligence reside, uh, we managed to connect uh, uh, pool builders with the public health officials to solve Zika, for instance. Okay, so do you pitch to governments what they need or do governments come to you? So we, are, we tend to work with governments or mm -hmm. any other kinds of public interest uh, organizations around specific problems. And then we think in terms of, okay, for that kind of problem, what kind of methodologies are uh, best uh, uh, used, and then we develop end-to-end uh, uh, -end solutions. We've heard a lot today about the desperate need for very radical change. Right. You mentioned something before we went live. Tell me a little bit about the 100 questions. So, so we have a new initiative, which is called the 100 Questions Initiative. And uh, uh, I started the initiative because I became uh, frustrated sometimes that the insight that was generated from data 
is marginal and not radical enough vis-a-vis -vis the problems and the scale of the challenges that we currently have. And so the 100 questions tries to turn typical data initiatives or AI initiatives somewhat upside down. Mm -hmm. Typically, especially in certain sectors, they start from the data and think about what can we uh, extract from the data. What we try to do is saying, well, okay, what are the questions that matter? And then look into what are the data sets that we need to start answering those questions. And so what we're going to do, and we started uh, uh, two weeks ago, is we're going to focus on 10 domains and we start with migration uh, and then engage with, again, um, uh, through collective intelligence. We're going to engage with both experts and those that care about the subject and then identify 10 questions that matter and then build data collaboratives around those questions. Have you got any questions yet? Uh, we just started okay. uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, we have four types of questions if okay. you want to answer. Um, uh, and so the four types of questions that we're looking into are one, becoming smarter about the situation, right? So understand or uh, becoming smarter about what is the current reality. Uh, with regard to migration, for instance, cross-border uh, crossing of uh, uh, individuals or, for instance, displaced individuals in a particular kind of country. The second type of questions are questions that then try to make sense of reality. What was the cause of the reality that we are in? And so a cause and effect kind of questions is the second one. What explains why we suddenly see a, 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 a height or an increase in uh, crossing certain kinds of borders, for instance. The third kind of questions are then dealing with prediction. So what can we expect to happen? And then the fourth type of questions are then related with the impact that certain interventions to deal with the reality might have. Mm -hmm. OK. So do you think it's fair to say, I think a few years ago we were all really excited about just AI being a tool that we could use, but now we're kind of trying to hone in and not just using it for the sake of using it. So are you trying to uh, adjust the variables to be a little bit more specific? Yeah, yeah. too often uh, at the early stage of uh, uh, the hype of a technology, whether it's AI or blockchain, for instance, for that matter, um, is that we see that the, the, the technology is in search of a solution, right? As opposed to, uh, in search of a problem uh, to provide a solution for. And what we try to uh, start with is the problem and then be pragmatic uh, with regard to what are the solutions mm -hmm. that might be best uh, suited for the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, train the AI for the solutions first. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, and data, for anyone that missed your TED talk, um, if you could just summarise, I know it was, wasn't this quick, but um, what is the silver lining to the fact that corporations will collect our data until the end of time? Well, <laughs> uh, well I mean, we, we have to make it a silver lining. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, uh, what I tried to emphasise in the um, TED talk was that corporations tend to be the dominant data collectors these days mm -hmm. and th that also comes uh, with a, a responsibility to uh, create insights of the data that can be used to improve people's lives and so what we have focused on is how do we leverage private data for public good using data collaborations for instance following a um, earthquake how can we leverage with telephone corporations to leverage call detail records to identify how people are moving around out of the disaster zone so that for emergency relief agencies, they know exactly where people are and exactly where they should provide um, resources, for instance. How do we know, for instance, um, what triggers uh, suicide ideation among teenagers? Well, we can use um, search uh, queries, for instance, to become smarter about what are the keywords that trigger and or are an indication for certain kinds of uh, mental health conditions, for instance. So there is a lot of data out there that private sector has. Mm -hmm. And what we are focusing on is what's the responsibility to leverage that data for good and what are then the infrastructures that are needed to do so so that uh, data becomes a positive uh, resource uh, in the life of people's uh, um, daily being. And the government can take advantage of it. 
and the government can work with the private sector, which is why we call it collaborations. Mm -hmm. So this is not just private sector opening up the data. It's about new kinds of public-private partnerships uh, with those that can act upon the data. Because the biggest challenge with the data in the data field quite often is what we call the end-to-end -end kind of data challenge. From data to knowledge, we figured that out. AI is one uh, tool for that. But then from knowledge to action, we need other partners and other uh, mechanisms. And that's where, for instance, governments quite often need to be a partner from those that can generate insights from the data, but they can then translate that into action. OK, well, thank you so much for joining me. I'll let you go and change the world now. And I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> thank you very much.